Hello, my fellow readers. This is I, Dark Symphony 777, whack with another fan fiction reading. As always, the link to the store will be in the description below. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, click on that bell for notifications, and leave a comment in the comment section below on your thoughts on the story. So, the story I am doing a reading of is Your Name Like Oil Poured Out by Signwolf. It's over on FIMFiction.net. And so. I just, let's just get started. <clears throat> Excuse me. I decided to grab the sword because it looked interesting. Yeah, let's get, let's start. The rumbling stopped at last, and at last Rarity heard nothing but her own beating heart and the fading echoes of twisting steel. She was, as far as she could tell, be told, alive. She felt for her, she felt her stomach, her chest, her face, yes, most certainly alive. And with a few more pats, she just relatively in one piece as well, which was a relief. The relief was, unfortunately, short-lived. Then came the slow, crawling realization of what happened and where she was. The ground had cracked underneath them as the Formorian giants had caught up to their bus. Rome and Bash, still determined to get at least some of the girls to the Formorian king, swerved to avoid their great clubs. Rarity, unable to keep herself from turning in her seat to look, had lost her balance, had gone toppling onto the floor. Momentum carried her this way and that, metal bars underneath the ratty school bus street, uh, seats digging into her arms as she screamed. <coughs> and then the ground had begun to give way. It rose before them, and Rainbow pulled in the bus into a sub, into a stop that sent them all scrambling and rarity to the back. They scrambled out. She tried. She lost them. Or they had lost her. Some had lost someone. She was in the dark. Her breathing was so loud in the darkness. Had it always been this loud in the daylight? Had it always been like a gale in her ear? And she had always breathed this hard, this fast, this frantically. No, she didn't. I mean, shows she hasn't. Rarity tried to calm herself, but doing so found, but found doing so difficult. If her friends were victorious, maybe they could free her, but only if they had time. And if they thought she was alive, if the giants above won, or they were reinforced, no, she wouldn't think of that. They were six. They were still six magically superpowered girls up there. Surely that was enough. Why couldn't she hear them fighting? How far down was she? How had the bus fallen? And how far? With weak, weak and shaken hands, she reached out and felt around her, falling in a seat so that was lucky, and no wall behind so she wasn't in the back. Further exploration and she found the window, and immediately cut herself on the glass. Rarity cursed. As she pulled her hand back, she felt something grab her. She hissed and protested, throwing both hands out as if whatever in, whatever in, in sorts her out. Who are you? She screamed a voice, Twilight's voice. I have magic and... Twilight! Twilight, it's me, Rarity called. Twilight, who had been levitating her body, dropped Rarity with a painful yelp. She wa she was back. She was back in her seat. What the hell is up with this? <laughs> Rubbing her back, she sat up and sighed. As lovely as it is to see you, darling. Hear you, rather. Rarity turned off. She touched her injured hand and tried not to make any further embarrassing sounds. Probably bleeding. It felt wet, but in the pitch black, she didn't trust her senses at all. Sorry, I didn't know. It certainly wasn't a giant, Rarity gows, then softened. Sorry, Twilight, you wouldn't happen to have any bandages, were you? I need to close this wound. If I can, I'm not sure how big it is. I, I'm not sure I can, Rarity, Twilight said very softly. What? That that brought her up short. What? Kind of stuck. Shit. <laughs> stuck in what way, she asked, gently as she could. She tried not to imagine it too closely. She tried not to think about Twilight's body pierced with steel and pinned like a bug in a card. Some grunting, soft sounds of flesh impacting metal. I'm not sure, Ridley. It's hard to tell. Are you hurt, darling? If you're hurt. I'm fine. I think I'm fine. I feel a little pinched, but... Oh, that's fine. Just keep together by crushing... Oh, no more thinking. Twilight was fine. Twilight, that's good to hear, dear, she said lamely. She cradled her hand and tried very quietly not to panic. Your blouse, Twilight said, then coughed. You should tear it. I don't have any bandages. Fluttershy has her has her medical stuff, remember? I'm assume I assume that at least someone else had something. I did. I'm not really sure where my bag is. Beat. I'm afraid I, I'm afraid to go looking for it. I'm afraid. The bus. I'm not sure how stable it is. Ah. Uh, they were quiet. Rarity heard Twilight breathing now, and wondered that she hadn't before. At first it was so so very loud, too loud. It crowded her, but then it wasn't crowding her so much as sheltering, sheltering her. Another voice, another breath, 
Another moth around the lamp. Rarity knew she would make it. She knew she would be alive. A lady is too grand a thing to die in such an ignorable and pathetic way for her. And, uh, and for another, all of her friends had magical superpowers. Surely this counted in some way towards her eventual salvation. She would make it. Her body was intact. Her sanity was intact. She herself entire was intact. You and you didn't just die with your body and your mind fine and your heart beating. That wasn't how dying worked. You couldn't just die alone like that. It wasn't as if she ran out of air down there. Could you run out of air down here? She thought about that more than once. Drowning. Suffocating. That might have been just gas at nothing. She always had air and couldn't imagine not having it. Your lungs would pour that void, or would you pass out first? Would you never even get to have that final moment? Would you just fall asleep and never wake up, or rarity? She almost fell out of her seat. Yes, she managed, clinging to the fall leather. Leather. Is it okay if we, you know, talk or something? Where are you? I'm a few seats ahead of you. I think ahead. I'm not sure which way is which, honestly. Did you bandage your hand? Rarity blinked. No, I hadn't. She gripped her blouse and bit her lip. Even now, for the briefest moment, she felt as if tearing it was as if tearing it was some sort of crime. It really was a lovely blouse, and you're hesitating because you're mad. Tear the damn skirt. So she did, or she tried. And it proved much harder than she expected. Can we excuse me, this is proving a bit taxing. Can I even use this twilight? Wanna get dust in the wound or some such? Twilight was quiet for a moment. Believe it or not, she replied faintly. I actually don't know. I read about basic first aid decor before. I just... I, I have, it's just been a while. I see. Rarity groused and pursed her lip. She pulled the, she switched the pulling at the sleeves and after some struggle managing to tear something off. It would have to do. They were both silent for a moment as Rarity worked. And at last she laid back against the seat. Away from Twilight, but her thoughts drifted back towards her friend. It's uncomfortable, dear. No. Oh, good. A rarity. Yes, she heard wrestling. wrestling. That was a lie. It actually is really cramped. I had a feeling. I tried moving it while you were bandaging. I think you were bandaging. I heard a ripping sound. I'm so stupid. I shouldn't have used magic on you. I'm all but out. Stupid, stupid, stupid. God's Twilight, you're stupid. Twilight, stupid, none of that. Stop. She did stop. Rarity cleared her throat. You have no guarantee that your magic wouldn't have given out halfway and crushed you. We can't know. We can't afford to dwell on it either. Why not? What else can we do? Moving up might kill us both, and I can't do any magic for a law for I don't know how long. Nothing we can do, and none of the skills that we possess are useful here. Can we even waste time or energy? Can we ever? Much of life consists of not being able to do much, Twilight, Rarity said, still looking ahead. She closed her eyes, which did nothing, but made her feel oddly restful. That's bullshit, Twilight said. She coughed again. Twilight noted the sound. I mean, Rarity noted the sound and filed it away for later. It sounded a bit off. So, explain, dear. If nothing else, it will keep us both from worrying. Yep, all right. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, you always have options, Twilight said. Always, you can learn more, work harder, get faster. If your skills won't cut it, you can learn from other skills. You can, Rarity said. Not all of us are so blessed. But I'm not blessed. I got this way by working at it. By being blessed with natural gifts that make the world work bloom, Rarity said, turning her fingers in circles, as if to, be, as if to hurry herself along. I don't doubt your worth that, Twilight. And it isn't an attack. Hard work makes the woman. I'll say it as much as you, but we all do have some limits. I mean, do you think you could be as social as I or Pinky? Keep up with as many people as we do? Keep your names and ages and secrets and preferences straight? Could you do that and then be able to navigate every encounter with them? I've no doubt you can memorize facts, but you'll admit that is daunting. I could... I mean, I've gotten so much better. I already felt petty. You have, dear. You've become a social butterfly in your own right. I've been very proud of how you've grown. Thank you. I didn't mean to cause offense, Rarity said, gentler this time, as if offering a hand. It's okay. Rarity sniffed, and the royal dirt tickled at her nose. Maybe that would do her in, the dirt eating up all the space for air. And Rarity, just here? If I get my magic back, do you think you can hold your crystal shield long enough for me to pull us out? Maybe? Perhaps. I'd love to try, Rarity said, knowing she wouldn't and couldn't. 
they'd have to free Twilight first. And without food, she wouldn't have energy. Or maybe she was wrong and they'd be out in no time. Who knew? How long has it been, Twilight asked. I'm not sure. A few minutes? At least five minutes? Ten? It was then she ever remembered that she had a phone and hurriedly duck around in her pockets. Nothing. Twilight, you wouldn't have any happen to have access to a phone, would you? Shuffling. No. Of course. Last. Shouldn't they be done fighting now? Well, we can't be sure they aren't already, or... Well, it's been quiet for in here for a while. How far down are we? We can't have dropped that far. We only fell for a few seconds. Two or three at most. And I doubt it was that long. Rarity could almost hear the numbers whirling around in her head. I haven't the foggiest, Rarity said. She found she didn't actually care. She could care. She didn't. Twilight's predicament she cared about. But otherwise, caring was so difficult and took so much energy, she really did just not have that much energy. She, couldn't she just die in peace without having to do any of the blasting math? Twilight, she said, struck by a whim. If I don't have some sort of talk going on, I think I should go rather mad. Right, how do we stay talking? Kind of hard to be. Another cough. Sorry, kind of hard to do the whole light conversation thing in here. The game. One question for a question, back and forth. That sounds alright. Uh, Twilight answered, and Rarity imagined she smiled. She hoped Twilight was smiling. Smiling meant she was alright. She had, su And Twilight had such a lovely smile that, that the thought just made her feel better overall. You first, Rarity. Well, right then. Where to start with? I'll start with this. Uh, do you have any normal activity that I wouldn't know about? Twilight hummed. I bake, she said. You? Pardon, you bake? I'd forgotten that if I knew that. Twilight giggled, though the sound was scratchier than usual. I do. Well, I'll happily join you in that pursuit if we have the time. Your turn. Do you have something that you do that I don't know about? Verity proofs her head and thought. Well, it's not a recent activity per se, but... Online poker. Twilight's laughter was a surprise bark. You're joking. Twilight felt absolutely ridiculous. Odd as it sound, I am not. It was years ago. I seen some movie or other and was browsing on my parents' computer and had some odd ideas about what acceptable ladylike behavior was. It's easy to think of yourself as sophisticated and smart when you remember that your napping father's credit card is easy to find. Oh, wow. How old were you? Old enough to watch the original kids Casino Royale, uh, Rarity Grouse. Perhaps 10 or 11. I spent about $200 before my mother found me. I imagine she wasn't happy. Yes, and neither was I afterwards. Okay, that was a good answer. Your turn. Rarity rubbed her cheek with one open palm. The sensation was nice, and her hand felt so cool. Who was your first kiss? I, uh, do I have to answer? You don't know then. Ah, uh, Twilight entertained me. I languish here, bored and trapped, and trying not to imagine what you looked like back there. Fine, fine. Her name was Peach Blossom. I was 13, and she wanted to practice, and I went along with it because even as a 13-year-old, I could see through that. I did not care at all. Rarity blinked. You know, I wasn't sure if you swung that way. Surely you suspected. Well, yes, suspected, but I hadn't asked. Well, you now know. And so that's neat. Ah, uh, no. You have more to tell. Twilight well, started to speak, but whatever words came were drowning coughing. Rarity bit her lip. She wanted to ask. Twilight had lied the first time. She knew that now. Sorry, it's Dusty. She was cute. She is now. I kind of knew I wasn't straight already, but I guess I thought I could make sure. I didn't exactly have a lot of examples for how queer romance works, Rarity, so, so someone asking the absolute dumbest and most transparent question to me ever seemed like a miracle. We kissed in her room after school one day, and we both liked it, but were too embarrassed to keep going. And then we ended up trying again and just made out. And you dated, I assumed. Nope. Rarity swallowed. Truly. I was a shut-in and she was shy, and together we suffered the classic sapphic conundrum. Lesbian sheep syndrome. Rarity snorted. Which is what, exactly? Toilet cleared her throat. Never one heard of that one. It's a joke. Kind of a mean one and kind of a bitter one. Women are told for so long that they are pursued, not pursuers. And expected to be submissive. Society tells you to mind your place long enough, and as a group, you internalize that to the point where even if you're not interested in bed at all, you still end up awkwardly side by side. Neither are you willing to make the first move, like two dumb sheep. That's the joke. You don't want to make it weird or feel like you're being pushed, you're creepy, and she's thinking it. Yes, I, I know the feeling. 
Rarity said quickly, flushing. Yeah, I guess I would. Huh? Excruciatingly, yes. It's your turn, Twilight. If it helps, Peach and I are still friends. She and her boyfriend are part of my local TCG playgroup, and I so I see her every now and then. Your first kiss? Rarity sighed. I had actually hoped you'd be original on this one. It was... You want to know? Well, I do now. Tell me, before the crush, crush crushes me. This is, that isn't funny, Rarity said flatly, as you can imagine. Sorry. It was Trixie. It did what? Sorry, I thought you said, don't be rude, Rarity said, carefully hugged, hugging her lips to her chest and squeezed her eyes shut. She was very sweet, but she was also very straight. I told her I wasn't. She expressed curiosity. I na naively offered to do much more as your friend did, because I, was, I too was not the cleverest of children. She hated it. Twilight didn't respond at first. She was a beat late, and a few more beats late. I already swallowed again. At last, she answered it. You liked it. Of course I did! Rarity snapped, then winced. Sorry, I'm just more tense. It's fine. Fine. Just feeling a little closed in. Huh. Yeah, she she didn't like it, and I did. And I felt gross and unwanted, and perhaps a bit unnatural. But feeling stuck was, you know... No? Early on in my transition. Very early. I barely started. Your what? Nothing, dear, Twilight. I do need to ask something. Sure. Are you really alright? Well, I didn't answer at first. A lot, which Rarity had expected, but it expected did not make it easier to bear. I don't know. Her voice was so small. It was a bird she can break in her hand. I really don't know. There's a lot on me, and I think some of it's a seat. But the wretch, I don't know. It hurt to move earlier. That's why I stopped. And then I try. And then when I tried again, and I couldn't. I couldn't. And it hurt. It doesn't hurt right now, but it's a little tight. Rarity's breathing was quick and shallow. She tried to rein it in. That's fine, dear. Is talking bad right now? It's kind of hard. I want to. Well, okay. We'll keep talking. Okay. Rarity took a deep breath and ran her hands all along her face, just feeling it, just making sure she was all there. Your turn. What transition? Rarity laughed. She laughed bitterly and openly, and eventually kind of genuinely. Twilight, God. Really, even right now, you're not going to let a single rock be unturned, are you? God, I really love you, you know that, and you don't even know. Twilight chuckled too. Sorry, got a reputation to hold. And it's a good one, dear. I'm not punish your impeccable record by sticking your nose into every secret. Though this one wasn't really a secret. Rarity wasn't always my name. People didn't always think I was a girl. I didn't always look this way, and my voice didn't always sound this way. You understand? I... Oh. Rarity chuckled. Genuinely chuckled without a bit of regret. Oh, indeed. I'm honestly very pre pleased you didn't know. I think I pass. It means I pass as well. At least I'll take it as a sign for such. Congratulations, then. Rarity smiled, which had become unbidden, now left bit by bit. So yes, I internalized this unfortunate incident in a bad way, as I internalized many things. Unfortunately, it's my turn now. I'm sorry. It's quite all right, dear. Rarity said hurriedly. But my question: If you could trade places with Twilight, the other Twilight, would you? Twilight laughed, or rather, she coughed with humor. That's not the best question. You already know the answer. I wouldn't. Same, Rarity said. And peeked over her shoulder. Of course, she could see nothing. I mean, give, it, give up on these poor looks to become a horse? No, thank you. As Twilight laughed, she continued. Sure, magic would be nice. But can the other me pick up things? Sorry, dear sweet little ponies. But for all your cuteness, we have one advantage. Thumbs, which don't require any sort of magical batteries. Their laughter faded. Twilight was quiet. They were both quiet. For all her need for noise and sound, for all of both of their needs, there does come a point where you just cannot talk anymore. At least not meaningfully. You'll feel it. They'll feel it. The words will limp out of your mouth and fall flat and lifeless on the ground, or crawl half blind and malnourished along the bed, or between the chair legs from you towards a now more alien other. Rarity knows this yawning gulf. She knows it as well as everyone and knows else knows it. But then the awkwardness fades, and the gnawing begins. The feeling of emptiness eating at your eardrums, like someone screaming right in your ear. Rarity hated it. She always hated absolute silence. The gust of her own breathing was white noise now. And beyond it, there was no comforting mundanity to focus on. My turn, Twilight asked at last, and Rarity could have wept with relief when she heard. Please, go on. How do you know that I'm here? How do I know that you're here? Rarity blinked. That was too, she said at last. 
I know. What exactly, how exactly do you mean that, Twilight? I don't know. Passing time? How do I know you're not a hallucination? I do love a, an existential quandary, Twilight. But that's a bit on the nose, isn't it? You don't know. And that your eyes can trick you and your mind is easy to fool with stray sparks and chemicals. And your ears are fallible. It's perfectly possible that I am in fact an illusion. But I'm not. You never had that weird moment when you stop and blink, Twilight asked, and then cough for a good half a minute before continuing. Sorry, you never had a moment where you were doing something and you get lost. Not physically lost, though you can, just like another pause. Whenever Twilight paused, Rarity felt like the floor shifted beneath her, or like the earth outside shifted and pinched closer around the sealed cocoon that sheltered them. The earth outside, beyond the broken glass, she was worried about still, waiting in bit with bated breath on Twilight's sparkles every word. I'm not sure I know what you mean, Ryrie said. Never stopped and thought, why am I here? Never felt like always... Twilight took a deep breath. Rarity needed to know why. You never felt like you'd just always been there, been somewhere, or been doing whatever it is you're doing, even for a moment. Sure, I'm feeling that right now. It's just nerves, Rarity said. I know. I used to be deathly afraid of forgetting who I was. I keep thinking about that. It's such a dumb fear. I had this whole scenario in my mind with a hundred different variations. <laughs> Every single one was asinine and pointless. I would wake up and lose things one bit at a time until there was nothing left. I forget my parents first, and then my friends, and then they forget me. That one scared me more for some reason. I wake up in my house and go downstairs so my parents would think I was some stranger breaking into their home. Or not remembering having a daughter at all, or... Twilight? I just don't want to be... Twilight, darling, please, please, I need you to stop. What? You're spiraling. I need you to... Twilight, please bleed. Slowly. One, two, three, one, two, three. Remember. I do. Her breath sounded ragged. Rarity shifted in her seat, now fully looking back into the void where she guessed Twilight was. Even after hearing her voice talking and pointing the direct direction, it was hard to trust anything. They tell you that you're losing sight brings everything else to the floor, and they meant it are and they aren't entirely wrong. They are but the average person overrates just how good they are at reading the signals that other senses give. You could smell and hear everything. It doesn't mean you can use that information at all at all. So she pointed herself and hoped she wasn't off. It didn't matter, but it felt like it mattered. Twilight Yeah. I want to come over there. I'm going to try and move, okay? If it starts unbalancing us, you tell me. I guess so. If moving that much would do it, it probably already would have. Fair. Rarity rose stiffly and slowly. She slid one foot across the floor and into the alley, waiting for the sickening sound of twisting metal. Quickly, she reached out and gripped the seat across the way, doing her best to ignore the shooting pain as her, as her cut ground against the metal bars beneath the leather. Step by step, she advanced. Cutting a path in the dark, the bus did not break or tip. There was no twisting metal. But even so, her beating heart took up the whole bus, and with nervous energy, she landed on the seat several rows back and clung. How close am I? she asked the dark. Closer, it replied. A few more rows. Twilight's small voice compelled her. She continued until she felt she did feel something strange under her feet. The bus had deformed under pressure. Her mouth was dry, and her forehead pulsed with drumming pain. Her heart trying to split her skin. The seats were warped, torn apart, and she put a hand up to find the ceiling slanted. Rarity swallowed, tried to speak, and choked on her words. You made it. I'm glad we didn't unbalance the bus, Twilight said a little listlessly. Rarity snipped. I am too, dear. Rarity? I'm glad. For what? Rarity asked, gingerly setting herself down. That you're here, I mean, she coughed. Rarity thought that sound was so soft. So precious. Every sound from her voice was a small barbed gift. I'm glad it was you. And that would be... Honestly... Same, she said and laughed. Same. I'm glad you're here with me. Right now. And it was a lie because she wanted Twilight anywhere else. Up in the sun where she could breathe. I really, really hope we get out of here soon. I do, Twilight. I need you to be very honest with me. A beat. Okay. Are you okay? I mean, are you injured? I... I can't tell, Twilight said, her voice trailing. I can't. I don't think so, but... My extremities are... feel a bit numb. I am very trapped. I don't want to scare you. It's pinched. And I'm in the divot. Or part of me. My chest hurts. My legs are kind of numb. And I'm not sure why. Rarity nodded. 
She didn't really know why, because she hadn't answered her own question fully, but it felt right. Okay. Can I ask a favor, Twilight asked? Anything. Twilight chuckled to herself, and Rarity's heart melted. This sounds so dumb. It is dumb. And I'm dumb. Can you just touch me? I mean my head, hand, arm, anything? Play with my head. You're so close now and the dark is. Rarity was already reaching out and halfway she met her friend's outstretched palm and their hands slid along each other. Ships clip, uh, clipping each other in the fog. She felt the soft skin of Twilight's arm beneath the tattered sleeve. And she felt a tear and felt her hand slip on the slickness. Blood or sweat? She did not ask. It found Twilight's soft hair. She imagined it, frayed and out of place beneath her hand. It wasn't always just so. And she stroked it carefully as her nerves were allowed. We'll get out, she said. I know. I won't forget you. You won't forget me. Or you, I guess for that matter. You're a hard one to forget, Twilight Sparkle. Am I? I'm not so sure. You have a lovely, vibrant personality. I'm a recluse. And if I pay Bach Cello Suite behind locked doors, it does not lose an ounce of its beauty. Rarity could feel Twilight rolling her eyes, and she couldn't help but smile. You know what I mean. And I still refute it. You are lovely, and I am glad for your company. Even at this place, and you are not so easily forgotten. Twilight mumbled something that sounded like a thank you, and, Tw and Rarity didn't press. She went back to stroking her hair, friend's hair as soonly as she could. Strangely, comfortingly, it re reminded her of helping Sweetie Belle back to sleep after nightmares. It was alright. It was alright. You say I'm not forgettable, Twilight began with obvious distaste, but how? I'm not aware of having so much in the way of a personality. Rarity sputtered. You have lots. Personality, I mean. You have lots. Oh, damn it, Twilight. Twilight sipped it under her hands. Forgive me for... Forgive me. I'm not bewildered that you would say that. Or that you could think it. I'm sorry. Don't be, dear. Would explaining it help? Rarity felt her head nodding before the affirmative answer. Then go ahead. Twilight squirmed, and Rarity let her hand go still. It moved up and down as Twilight did, and that felt awesome nice. I never felt like there was much of an idea of me... I know that doesn't make much sense, but I had my experiences in sensory data. She sipped it again, and Rarity wished she could see Twilight's bro crumpled in annoyance at language. But that's not a person. It's readouts and results. I thought that was fine. But everyone around me kept talking about finding themselves or figuring themselves out. That's how our parents and teachers talked about it. And that didn't make sense. No, it didn't. I wasn't lost. I was here. A bundle of experiences. And that's not what they meant. Yes, how do you know you were? You know, for all I know, there's just something like that I don't know about myself. I took a deep, haggard breath. God, I'm never going to know. I'm never going to find out I'm going to die here, aren't I? Rarity, it's just going to stop. We'll run out of oxygen as we inhale. I'm using up too much right now. Oh my, Twilight, stop it. Please, dear, breathe. If I breathe too deeply, short, uh, uh, shorten my one, two, three. Though Rarity could almost see her barely restrained panic, she felt and heard Twilight breathing with her. Three, two, one. They went back and forth like this a while, until Rarity returned stroking her friend's hair and listening to the softness of her breath. I knew because I felt like I was out of place. I felt like an awkward idiot. Lo and behold, I was one. But for more than just the normal reasons. Everyone is at first. At that age, I was just two beats off from where my peats were half stepped down from the song my male friends made of their lives. I wanted different things, and felt different things. I just assumed that they all hated me what we all were as much as I did. And they must, because I dislike it so much, and I didn't want to think I was broken so very fundamentally. You aren't, Twilight said. Rarity smiled and shushed her softly. It's all right. I moved beyond it. Mostly. Don't you mind? I used... To I used to spend all my time with my silver cadence. That's why she knew me so well. She babysat me. Did she? Rarity asked. She scooted closer until she found something that felt like a wall and leaned against it. She hoped she was close to Twilight. I know she cares about you quite a lot. We're like sisters. She used to take me to the library and I would just... But her voice wandered. I can imagine, Rarity offered weakly, taking up space, trying to push the smoldering quiet back. Rarity already knew it but found herself discovering a truth in the way that only experience it in a liminal space can provide. You can only focus on how awful it's going to be when you and the people you love die for so long before you start to drift into new topics more or less by accident. 
you start thinking about how to escape them. Your mind just starts moving without any rare, you discovered. She didn't know the math. She had no idea how much air two nervous girls could even breathe. But she made it up as she went. Scenarios sprang up out of nothingness. Ones where Twilight lifted them encapsulated and one of Rarity shields up and out of their prison, burrowing through the rocks and dirt and the asphalt until they lay sp sprawled across the green grass under a welcome sun. Unbidden, she wondered how it might feel to lie panting, aching, alive, and breathing, but even the shadow of doubt. Her mind bombarded her body with every way it might feel. The oxygen burning so beautifully, her chest heaving, her skin caressed by a hundred blades of perfect loving grass. Twilight was right. She would never connect the gap between what she experienced and what she was. Rarity couldn't show her and Rarity didn't know herself. There wasn't enough time. There wasn't enough time of how much and how much of it was wasted. How much of it left in front of her. Rarity had chosen to change her life when she was young. It all came tumbling out dramatically over some triviality, as everything she had ever tried to bottle up inevitably did. It started out with new clothes and new hairstyles, and none of that fit either. And nothing had fit some, but some things fit better than others. The world had never felt entirely right, but she learned to appreciate it like she appreciated jazz and art. Ignoring how the grating of half tones hurt and loving how it enticed onwards. She'd done so much work perfecting or trying to perfect. She hit herself so well. Practiced in front of so many years and trained her voice so well that it was impossible to tell. The friends who knew her from when, from before barely even remembered. She had reached back into history and gasped it with a steel vice and bade it to leave or die. Memory by memory, on her command, she'd done so much and it was all going to be wasted and she was going to die curled into a corner in a stupid shitty public trans transit tomb. Rarity gripped her hair with both hands and she did curl up and on herself then. Twilight hadn't said anything in what? Minutes? Hours? Time was fake. She didn't know how to keep it with no reference. God. <coughs> her nails, perfect as always, cut exact, clawed at her face, clawed, 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 until she threw her hands down on either side and took deep, horrible breaths. Ones that she could feel wasting the precious life given oxygen around her. Twilight, she asked. Hmm? Twilight, dear. Is your magic back? I, not yet. Rarity nodded, nodded spastically. Of course not. Silly me. Thinking of getting out? Of anything. Rarity reached her out her hand, just anywhere and though nothing. She tried to call an ounce of that power back. It flickered along her arms, crystal sprouting out of thin, a thin air in front of her, glowing faintly. Glowing. She blinked, then, and then turned to try and see Twilight in the dim light. Her bunny shield only held for a few seconds, but she could make out the general shape of her friend's predicament. The chairs had folded on her as the ceiling of the back end was pressed to the floor, and Twilight was in the middle of it. But she had not but she'd not seen blood. Surely that meant Twilight was fine. Alright. Oh, yes, of course it does. Because this is a movie and everything works out evenly like that. Of course, she tried it herself. We could, Twilight managed, move this. She almost said can we, but didn't. We can. Do you want me to try? Twilight made a little grunt that sounded affirmative, and Rarity moved toward her, feeling out her soft body to the tangled mess above her. She tried to leverage her immediately left weight, and her jumping chipped. Twilight buckled next to her, and Rarity stopped. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You were right? Yeah, that hurt. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Twilight sat back, her heart hammering in her chest. If we had our magic, we could lift this, she said weakly. And you could shield us both. You were thinking about that too. Lift us up like a wrecking ball. Twilight laughed. It's the obvious plan. I guess it is. Rarity felt Twilight's hand touch her leg briefly. As if she were groping for another hand to hold it. Rarity supplied it. We might recover in a few minutes. I can make a shield for a bit. So that's coming back. Twilight squeezed her hand. We might. Our friends could dig us out. If they got enough magic between them. True, Rarity said. She ran her thumb over Twilight's hand. I should have saved more power. Or it's probable that using her shield like you kept, did kept you in one piece, Twilight coughs, uh, countered slowly. Her voice seemed almost lazy. Sure, Rarity replied, thinking. Oh, there they came. Little Terry pinpricks. There they were. I'm sorry, Twilight. We'll get you out of here. I'll get us both. Or someone else will get us both. Rarity nodded. She clenched her free hand. She thought about the feel of magic. How it thrummed. How she wanted it to thrum again. We'll be in the sunlight again, darling. I know it. Do you? Rarity blinked. Do what? Twilight. 
don't, do you know? I don't. The pinpricks became something else. Rarity took a deep, unsteady breath. It was still hard to think. It had been hard to think normally all the while, really. Another breath. We're going to be fine. Darling, I promise. We're going to be fine. It wasn't a lie. She wouldn't lie to Twilight. That is the story. Um... I don't think it's mixed. Like the first, like, okay. So here's what I honestly think. The first half, everything from the beginning to, let's actually go down to around, uh, where is it? Where is it? That, 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 that. Um, to around here is, Kind of, I don't know how to say it, but it's kind of very, it's very, very cringy in a way. Like, I wouldn't say forced. I mean, honestly, the transition thing is actually, is forced. Like, I'll get to that in a little bit. But I think for the most of the story, it's very, very cringy. Like, you don't know what's going on. I guess that's supposed to be the point. But, but at the same time, right here at the beginning you actually had the basis of something else happening. Like, when it comes to these types of stories, you're not supposed to have... You usually don't have stuff like this. You usually start with them um, already in the scenario, and then as the story goes along, it you know, it fills in the blank. So I think this part would have made... Uh, this, uh, this couple of paragraphs uh, much farther down, like split across, and maybe even better structured. It is, the story is very dialogue heavy. Like, and a lot of it is just them talking. I get, again, I get what, what the author was going for. You're trying to present a kind of semi-hopeless semi situation with them slowly realizing over the course of the story that they're, that, that while they're constantly saying that they're going to be fine, they know in their heads they're not going to, they're, they're dead. They're going to die. They're going to die. And hence why the last sentence kind of is the way it is. With It wasn't a lie. She wouldn't lie to Twilight. But she would lie to herself. Like Rarity would lie to herself. Now I want to do highlight everything. And that is what is up with the weird politics. This is like this is one of those stories that didn't. Yeah, just why is there politics into it? Why is there lesbian Twilight? Fine. I get lesbian Twilight because it's a. You know it's my little pony like. Nine nine times out of ten, the po the girls are gonna be lesbian. Like nine times out of ten, they're they're gonna be lesbians. Like all all of them. Okay, that I I can I can tolerate that. I don't I don't like how it was structured in this in this way. Because it honestly does, because both this. Uh, let me get to it. Uh. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, wait, wait. Where is it? Yeah, oh, here it is. It's just, while I have no problem with the idea behind it, it honestly does seem, it does sound a little bit preachy. Like a little bit of you putting yourself into it. So it, it, it does kind of come off as worth the trans part, the uh, part with. Tra rarity being trans that is completely forced that is the only part of the story i i actually hate because of not only where it's at it's like at a very weird scenario like you're talking about lesbian and all of a sudden you mentioned trans and not like when i first read this because this is the, this is the second time i read the story the first time i actually paused it's like wait wait we're going from lesbian to trans and it the, the complete direction from rare Twilight being lesbian to uh, Rarity being trans is actually structured very awkwardly. That, that kind of that kind of what makes it forced in the fact that not so much the, the, the way they're talking or what they're saying, but more the transition from 
uh, Twilight to Rarity. That's what makes it poor. That transition. Um, like, like Rarity just you know casually mentions you know uh, on, uh, early in the transition. Like first, uh, and then all of a sudden Twilight just asks what transition, and then she goes, "Oh, I was feeling you know I was, I was I did not look like Rarity. I was not called Rarity. I it was just a very awkward. It was just a very awkward way of doing that." And that kind of, and that's what made it kind of forced. Like, if it was, if it was a little farther, like, um, like, if you move the trans part a little bit farther down to where after, um, re like, after Rarity starts moving across the bus and sits near Twilight and sort of cheer her up, she, you know, she talks about herself, that actually would have been more natural. Would it, and I just still would have been ex and it would have been executed just as well. Like I have no problem with the trans. It's just it's completely in the wrong place. That that's that's my big thing. It's just in the wrong spot for it to feel natural. It feels still. It feels very forced at the place it is in in the story. But that's it. And then we have uh, Twilight's weird introspective. It was. I just think it was weird. I just think. It didn't really have any place in the story. Like, a lot of the problems I have with this is just, they're just, I'll, the parts I don't like are just in the wrong spot to make sense. Hence why I don't like most of it. But then once, once Rare, um, Rarity goes to sit with Twilight after the, uh, the introspection and Rarity starts moving near Twilight, it actually picks up in terms of dialogue, in terms of thinking. Uh, it does get a little more polished. Uh, and they're slowly realizing, you know, that they might not be saved. Well, it doesn't read it. You can read between the lines and say that they're mentally starting to fall back on the possibility that they might not be saved. Uh, I thought, I thought it was fine. I do think, I do like the ambiguous situation. Like the only thing, like if I had to actually change anything, like it would just simply move. It would be change the whole rarity being trans, just move it farther down the story and have it and just simply move these first couple of paragraphs and interspecies uh first off uh ex explore them more and interspecies them um interspace them throughout the story like don't just put it like at the top leave it like over the course of the story so we're still kept in the dark and we're not giving like an immediate scenario, like, wondering, like, wait, what's with this weird build-up? Overall, I don't think it's a bad story, but I wouldn't, it's just, the first half is just too awkwardly implemented that I can't really give it any harder than three. I do think it's good, I don't think it's great. So that is my review, my reading of Her Name, Black Oil, Boiled Out by Sign Wolf. This has been Dark Symphony 777, and cut.